Wouldn't that sound great with the dance of the Valkyries going just right as the airplane comes up? I'm going to try that. Hi, everybody. Trace here. We are once again in mid-flight. Are we in mid-flight? Or Yeah, pretty much. We're on our way from Bhopal back to Tashkent. I know it's a little boring with this um, Bhopal to Tashkent run. Uh, we're in the premiere this time, obviously. And one of these days, you guys are going to get to see another taxi out and take off. But uh, it makes them a little bit more bite-sized when you join them in mid-flight, at least. And I was trying a lot of stuff with filing an IFR flight plan here, which I started out a few days ago doing in the Falcon. And today I was trying to see if some little trick might get the Navigraph or the Navigation Database to work. It was all a complete failure. And I just got, all it was was a gigantic refresher course in how much I hate trying to fly IFR in Flight Simulator. It's just, it just doesn't work. You need humans for air traffic controllers. I don't know, maybe VATSIM is a better alternative after all, although I've avoided it all this time. But anyway, so I just went back to filing a good old direct to flight plan. We are uh, 457 miles away and looks like it's getting kind of mountainous. We're at 8x, of course. Let's see, should we slow down? 457, Garmin, Garmin, that would be 15 minutes, I don't know, oh you guys can see the map at 8x. Are we going over the big white mountains? Just getting into them. Tell you what, at like, uh, at what? I don't know. Four or nine. At 350, I'll slow down to 4x. And we'll fly the last couple hundred miles in. Now, what I was talking about was these are practice landings. And I, this is no exception. I've got the weather, I, I let the weather lock in and put all the METARs in, and then I turned it off. And then I went to edit it, and we're gonna land in two mile visibility at Tashkent. For better or worse, come hell or high water. And I'm probably doing this a little bit too quickly because as I said with the last premiere flight, at five mile visibility, the landing of which was like acceptable, but not really great. At that time I said, well, maybe we'll stay with five mile visibility for a while. And of course, now I'm not following my own advice, which is typical of me. Garmin, 50 minutes. All right, Garmin, that'll be 15 real time minutes. 4x. So we'll go down to 4x. And get a look at these great big mountains at a more civilized speed. See, we're at 40,000 feet. Those mountains are 20,000 feet high. So we're only 20,000 AGL right now, more or less, the terrain being a little rough. You know, does that look unrealistically fast? Yeah, maybe slightly, but it's not really, I'm not finding it offensive. I hope you're not either. I'd love to hear some feedback on that. On that or any other topic you might want to discuss. Garmin, Garmin, I'm getting a little closer to the course line, scroll down five,
everybody all right back here? We're great, boss. Okay. As you can see, I've got the FMC tuned up. There it is. For what good it is. Does that have the... I've canceled it, so are all the legs still there? No, they're gone. Direct. Isn't there a D2 button? D2, U, T, 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 yep. Garmin. Now look, it's right on. Did I do that or did it? Garmin. We're going to do a little experiment here. Scroll up 20. Okay, what am I going to do? Well, we're going to see if by going back to D2 on the FMS, that will take over some sort of nav function. And here's what we're going to do. See if it corrects Bank itself. angle. Bank angle. Bank angle. Just the, when I went to it before, the, the little airplane was spot on the course line. Okay, we've now, nav is on. Let's just see what happens here. Is it going to possibly correct itself? I'm very doubtful. I think it'll just keep going right through it. We're going to give it a chance. Uh, no, 
right now. I was kidding myself. Scroll down 10. Scroll down 10. Scroll down 20. Scroll down 10. 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 off and on stuff. Yeah, well, scroll down 10. Scroll down 10. Scroll down 10. Scroll down 10. Scroll down 20. Scroll down 10. Garmin. I didn't realize that I had the noise level up at 50. And voice attack can't. That's too much background noise. Okay. We're 117 miles out. Scroll down 45. Tell you what, well, we'll fix this. Scroll up twenty. Secondary click. Scroll down twenty. Now let's fix our two X. This is not the end of the world. Garmin. Garmin. Okay, it's coming back. Scroll down 20. As much as we already had in. Scroll up 10. Scroll up to scroll down five. Secondary click. A little late to be fixing this stuff on. But there you go. Alright, let's see now. Garmin. Scroll up five. There's a classic example that I don't know if any of you guys go back to the videos from when this airplane was in Africa a couple of months ago now. Um, and we were having a problem, it was locking voice attack up. And it was during that period that I learned you really have to keep the sound level below the 30 measurement on, on the computer. So, you know, I wasn't I just wasn't thinking about it. And it seemed to be working fine. And then you saw it locking up. Well, I went and looked to see what the sound level was. It was at 50. I mean that's just that's way too high. So just a little downward adjustment there. And now it seems to be working fine. So that this is really good, clear example that it can be fixed. Scroll up 10. Let's see 
see, there it goes. Garmin. Yep. Scroll up 10. Scroll up 10. Scroll up 10. Scroll up 2. Five miles out at thirty thousand. Scroll up five. Scroll up five. Okay, let's get a terminal briefing on Hoping it's going to tell me that the visibility is two miles, which will be challenging, but I'm up for a challenge. Make a fool of myself in front of all of you folks. Yep, visibility two miles, wind zero zero five at five, gusting to ten, vis two miles. Uh, would that be runway eight? Or two six. I think it's going to be runway eight. That'll be seventy five degrees off. Okay, fourteen forty four. The field elevation is fourteen fourteen. So the top of descent is three thousand feet above that. So that's when I say stuff. What I would say with that would be fourteen forty four. That's what I'm talking about. Field elevation is 14. The top of descent is 4,400. That's the altitude I'm going to be looking for. And speaking of looking for it, let's get a little closer to it. Scroll down 45. Okay. Looks good. We're descending fairly well. How does the world look? The world looks okay. This is a pretty barren part of the world, really. This is the old Silk Road from Europe, Constantinople to China. This is the road Marco Polo took. I'll bet he went right through here. Garmin. Garmin. Scroll down five. The left. Well, all that crap I did a while ago, before I started this video, with trying to set up an IFR flight plan with, you know, all of the default waypoints that it puts in was a total failure. On top of that, with this airplane that only has heading and you don't have nav controls, you having to do all this stuff by hand. You know, an ATC is throwing orders at you. Do, you know, turn right heading, da 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 send or climb 18, one four thousand. Like, one, no, one four thousand, I guess. You know, it's just, I can't keep up with it. And why should I bother? It just makes the flight longer. So, yeah, call me a whore. I'm just doing it for the most direct way to do it. You know, a lot of guys do it. They want to do it the elegant way and be just like real world pilots. Well, let me tell you something. There is no way you can be just like a real world pilot in Flight Simulator. You can be very similar. You can very much approximate the experience, you can come to understand a lot about it, but I've done both. I had 500 hours in the real world, general aviation only, and I didn't get an instrument rating, I almost got it, but I know what it feels like on my butt, I know what it feels like on my shoulders, I know what it is like to fly a real airplane, and I'll tell you, this is very similar, but it ain't perfect. When, you, when you're trying to imitate dealing with the ATC system to perfection, 
with a machine. Uh, the ATC system is full of humans. And they give human orders and they have human inflections in their voice and they have human subtleties of understanding the situation and human stupidities too, which both pilots and controllers exhibit. Garmin, Garmin, and you just, you know, you just don't quite get that. And maybe VATSIM, as I said earlier, which has human people you can tie into in your flight simulator. Scroll down five. Scroll down five. I've always figured, well, they're amateur controllers. It's an amateur situation. Maybe I'm wrong. I'd love to hear from somebody who has had the experience and can tell me I'm wrong and say, no, you're wrong. I've done this. I'd love to hear that. Not, not like, you know, yeah, prove it, go ahead. Like, no, I seriously would like to hear it. And I'm ready to believe that that's the case. But I haven't heard it yet. You know, I'd love to hear that the Wilco Falcon 7X can be flown with all of all the FMS stuff with editing flight plans on the fly and all the stuff they say it can do that I've not been able to make it do. I'd love somebody to come and show me, yes, it can be done and here's how. I'm still waiting for that guy to come along. If you're that guy, please contact me. I'd love to hear about it. I'm serious. Scroll down five. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep doing it the way I'm doing it. Scroll down five. Scroll down five. Because I don't know any other way to do it. Scroll down 10. For Christ's sake. Garmin. Oh my goodness. Jeez, I've been talking to you people. Here's what we're gonna do. Down to normal. This is a classic example of how I've gotten carried away. We're still at 6,000. Let's get a runway assignment. We'll just fly out. I think they're gonna give us an eight. Okay. Let's see if they have an ATIS. They do have an ATIS. Stamp airport information, hotel 0449 Zulu, wind 00505, visibility 2, sky condition, no clouds below 20,000, temperature 172.9, altimeter 3003, ILS. Scroll down 10. Scroll down 10. Okay, what did I say was 4474? Wait, is that right? Or is it 1444? It's 1444, okay. Scroll down 20. Scroll down 10. Okay. No, you're looking the wrong way, eight. Right? Yeah, that's right. You're good. You're good. Okay. Scroll up 10. Scroll up 10. Scroll down 2. Okay, so there's 2 6. So the pointer's pointing at 8. You're good. You're good. Garmin.
let's verify on that altitude. This is the kind of thing you make an assumption. If you're wrong, you're going to find out you're wrong with no time to fix it. And two mile visibility, everything's got to be right. That stupid thing does not show you the field elevation. Fourteen forty four. Okay, it's verified. Scroll down twenty. Scroll down twenty. Scroll down 20. Oh no, scroll up 20. Scroll up 20. 45, that's, that's just what I want. Garmin. 15 miles, all right, we're gonna come around. Okay, bring her around. Scroll up 45. Scroll up 45. Scroll up 45. Scroll up 45. Scroll up 20. See, this is a unique situation. I'm passing through. There's perpendicular coming up. I'm not even at perpendicular yet. Global freeway 2070 cleared to land. Oh, wait. No, I got to go farther. I'm the other way. Cleared to land. Runway 8 left. Scroll up 45. I've got this backwards. Scroll up 45. I've got to be on the other side of the pink. Oh, brother. Close in, are we? This is interesting. Well, we're 19 miles, so scroll up 20. See, the, the heading bug has got to be outside of the pink to push the pink into the runway heading. Our airspeed is good for the situation. We're 18 miles out. Let's go farther and push it more. Scroll up 20. Now we're perpendicular. Okay. Time for gear down. Well, is it? No, not yet. Sixteen miles away. Okay, now you'll watch that pink needle heading toward the runway heading. Scroll up ten. Did you see that big barometer adjustment there? I was not hip to it. Fortunately, I've caught it soon enough. Okay, here we go. Scroll down 45. Scroll down 20. Now we want that pink and that green to be nailed. 
spot on together. Looking pretty soupy. Okay. This is a big airport with a big long runway. So I don't gotta worry about too much flaps or all of that sort of thing. Scroll down 20. Oh, that's too much. Scroll up 10. Scroll up five. The altitude here. Twelve miles away. Scroll up five. Global three ways cat zero and seven zero. Exit runway when able. I want that nail. That right on there. Scroll down five. Scroll down five. Scroll down five. Okay, time for descent. Scroll down twenty. Scroll down 20. Scroll down 5. Scroll down 10. Don't worry about speed. We're descending pretty quick. Which is what I want in such circumstances. Scroll down 5. Tiny little Justin, you want this, my theory is you want this nail, you want it right there, you know, you're still eyeballing. Airspeed 137, 136, let's keep it right about here if we can. Scroll up to, scroll up to, scroll down five. What are you doing? Scroll up 20. Garmin. Garmin. Pointer at the ground. There, 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 there. It's probably going to be too fast. Five hundred, four hundred, three hundred. Bank angle. Bank angle. Sink rate. Four hundred. Bank angle. Sink rate. Sink rate. Three hundred. Sink rate. Come on, come on, come on. You're almost there. Shit. That's close. I don't think it's gonna happen. Sink rate. Minimums. Hundred. Minimums. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Ten. 
10. We are not sophisticated enough for this yet. I mean, I had too much else going on today. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't very good, let's face it. I'll try to put a nice face on it. I can't really see a lot of value in this video, to tell you the truth. I'm going to finish it. You don't even end up inside the fence. A nice big airport like this. The problem is I was way too high by the time I sighted the ground. And that's something I've learned a long time ago. In these situations, you try to feel your way down to where you've got ground contact. When you can see the ground, that gives you a whole lot of information. This thing's got all kinds of... Whoops. Where are we going? Look at all these lights. It's got lead-in lights and everything else. Ugh. Should have been a piece of cake. Okay, where's the run? Where's the airport? Yeah, where's the airport? That's a good thing to know. Okay, taxi straight ahead. Get off the next right. More often than not, we land the 2-6 way. Do we? I don't know. That looks like an airport up there. We're going for it. Now, if I had activated spoilers, you know, while on descent, there's the white box. It would have slowed me down enough to where I probably would have been able to get her stopped. 
I'm going to go back and review the video, but I'll bet that's the case. Okay, the little white box has gone away, and White Line has acknowledged us at Tashkent. So, let me shut her down and put it away. But, you know, I mean, if you think back, go review it, review the video. Look back to when we first sighted the runway. You know, to get to it at that point, we were pointing straight down. But we did have it in sight, and there was arguably enough time and enough runway left to where I think we could have done it. There was the video a month or two ago bringing the very heavily loaded Falcon 7X into Santos Dumont in Rio, which is only a 4,000 foot runway, much smaller than this. And we did it. And that was a pretty steep descent too initially. At least we could see with that. But I, the, the principle is the same. You know, I, I think if I had it to do all over again, I would have, you know, multiple miles out, I would have kicked the spoilers in and gone down and found the ground. The other thing, of course, I could have done was just going around, but I'm too lazy for that. I just want to put the flight to an end. You know, if I was in a real airplane and my life was on the line, you can bet your ass I would have gone around. And that would have been an option. And I could have, you know, come around and having learned what I had learned already, I probably could have turned it into a halfway decent landing. But I like to do it right the first time. Well, that wasn't the most successful flight in the world. In fact, I'd have to say, secondary click, secondary click, secondary click. That's the worst landing I've had in quite a while. But, you know, it was for training purposes and you're gonna have to run into that stuff. Secondary click, secondary click. At least we didn't crash into a building or, or wreck or anything. I guess that's some consolation. But anyway, that's going to be it for this flight. So thanks for coming along. And I think maybe we, I don't know, I don't know. I, I always sit here at the end of a video and I think talk about what we're going to do next. I don't know what we're going to do next, but I'm sure it'll be fun. And as I said, thanks for coming along on this one, and we'll catch you later.